Hey, you potter than hell junkies. This is Carl Kennedy from The Rods and Kennedy. You're listening to the Potter Than Hell podcast with the metal encyclopedias themselves. Steve, BC, BB, and Dylan on the keyboards. Crank it up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hello there, Potter Than Hellions. Welcome back to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is Steve, your host. I am joined this week by... BC. And... BB. And special guest this evening is... Hoover. All right, there we go. We didn't know if we lost you for a second there, Hoover. How are you, my friend? I'm doing fine, man. I was taking a swig of the beer when you threw it to me. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, actually, because we're all getting our sips in between here. Nice hot day here. Finally a nice day in Pennsylvania to record on. And... Um, so uh, what's up, guys? Uh, BB, what do you got going? Anything cool? Oh, crazy, crazy times. You know, you know. It seems like you're stuck in the house, nothing to do, cranking tunes, doing more more yard work and house chores than I've ever done in my entire life. I think I'm drinking more beer in the last two months <laughs> than I've had when I was 21. Just uh, <laughs> amazing, amazing, uh, amazing time. Yeah. How about you, Hoover? How, how's <clears throat> things going down there in Hooverland? Uh, doing all right. Uh... Went back to the radio station uh, on Thursday and Friday, which was nice, and back at home, you know, a couple days a week back in Scranton, which is nice. It's uh, it, I was getting a little sick of being stuck at home. Cool, yeah. very cool. Hey, hey, were your were your Dio CDs there waiting for you? Uh, they weren't, but I had a couple of Dio shirts waiting there for me. Okay, nice. all right, that's, that's all right. That, that's, that was a good trade off, I guess. Yeah. Uh, BC, I, I, oh. I got one waiting for BB. All right, awesome. Cool. B, uh, BC, how are you, my friend? What do you got going? <laughs> working, 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 and uh, the house keeping me busy and costing me cash. That's uh, the money pit. The money BC's pit. money pit. The BC <laughs> money pit for sure. I, I can't wait till till BC moves in there because he'll have a he'll have a quicker commute to uh, record here for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing nothing much going on with me as well. Working still at the firehouse and uh, you know, my days off doing stuff around the house here. And BB, I I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I've drank more beer in the last two months than oh, yeah. than I think I have, and if, almost every day is like I'm on the like I'm on the Kiss cruise. It's like music <laughs> and beer, like. Yeah. But I but I I'm not starting at ten o'clock in the morning like we do on the cruises at least. Yeah, so yeah, I at least yeah, wait yeah. till about seven at night. So at least I, it's not an all day thing. I felt that when I put my Pride and Glory shirt on, it was a little little snug. I'm like, oh boy. Well, that's your wife shrinking the laundry yeah, again. I'll blame her. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I hope everybody out there is doing good. Um, you know, thanks everybody for tuning in, for sharing our episodes and interacting with us. It's, it's great. It's amazing just uh, how many people uh, we're hooking up with and, you know, saying hello to and sharing our stuff out there. And uh, before we get going here, let's do what are we listening to? Uh, BC, what are you listening to these uh, days? I've been uh, checking out both the, the Skid Row's uh, United Rebellion. Yeah, Rebellion? I'm screwing it up. You know what I'm talking I know about. I know what you mean. The, the, the EPs. Parts one and two. Yeah, 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 one and two EPs. And I guess you said uh, number three will be coming out in Ackerwood, hopefully soon. Yeah, number three is supposed to come out. I, I, from what I hear, number three is supposed to be a full album. Hmm. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but that was the last thing I heard about it. Uh, Hoover, how about you? What do you got going? You didn't, you didn't do your your truck again to the doors, did you? Uh, well, I tell you what, I, I came off uh, listening to the Rock and Roll 500 on Rock 107 all weekend long. I did go camping for a couple of nights up uh, near Vestal, New York, but on the Pennsylvania side. And uh, the whale up there was also doing the uh, Rock and Roll 500, so listen to that as well. So that's what I had rolling the last couple of days. That's a, that's a four-day event when that happens. That's yeah, that's always, that's always cool to throw on there. I, and the best thing is, like, there's, there's you know no repeats or nothing, so that's always cool to listen to. Uh, uh, BB, how about you? Uh, last night, the last album I listened to before I hit the crib was from 1973 B.C., Tres Hombres from ZZ Top. I, I I just think those first three opening songs, you know, uh, Waiting for the Bus, Jesus Just Left Chicago, and Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers are so fucking amazing. You know, love love that southern groove sound that they have. And uh, just one of those great things, just throw it on the old LP and just relax in the old rock and roll man cave. Love it. Yeah, remember remember the version that the Rock and Roll Residency did at Rock and Pod last year of uh, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. Yes. 
absolutely yeah, that, amazing. That, yeah, we'll have to find that. Yeah. We'll have to find that. I'm sure it's. A, I'm sure somebody put it on YouTube. Yeah, I think the. Uh, uh, oh, I forget what the name of the band. The one guitar player, he just absolutely tore it up from that. Not the Struts, they're a band like that, and they just broke up. I, the name is like pff, right out of my head, but uh, it was a great live version of it. That band is just absolutely rocking. Uh, for me, I've been listening to a little. Uh, Little Van Halen, Van Halen 1 and Van Halen 2, I'll tell you why in a couple minutes. Um, the new Pretty Maid's live album came out. Uh, it's called Made in Japan, M-A-I-D. I love how there's so many spins on that. You have Made in Japan from Deep Purple, and it's M-A-D-E. Then you got Made in Japan from Iron Maiden, it's M-A-I-D-E-N. And then this one is Made, Pretty Maid's M-A-I-D in Japan. <laughs> um, and that was uh, when they toured for the 30th anniversary of the... Uh, Future World album, so they did the whole album and then did a couple songs after that, and that was recorded on uh, November seventeenth of two thousand eighteen. It just came out this last week, and I've been rocking to that. And um, since we did the Iron Maiden episode last week, I've been like rocking the shit out of Somewhere in Time, like just after listening to Heaven Can Wait, just like totally, and that, and actually I think BB had Somewhere in Time picked as well, and I think that just like triggered my my Somewhere in Time button in my head that I just needed to listen to that album a couple times. Just uh, really cool. So that's what we're listening to. Uh, BB's got some ZZ Top going. Uh, BC has some... What'd you say? Skid Row. Skid Row. I'm sorry. I didn't write him down this week. And uh, Hoover was uh, listening to a thousand songs between two radio stations. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and how different those two radio stations were kind of blew my mind. Uh, how, how close were how close were both radio stations on the top five? Uh, I... I'm not sure about their top five because I was already I was already out of the area by then. But I tell you what, uh, usually it's Stairway to Heaven for us, and Stairway finished 185 this year. Really? What was number one? Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, probably because the movie's so hot. The movie, yeah. Oh, yeah. No shit. Wow, wow. Stairway way down. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Wow. I listen. I listened to a bunch of it, but I by the time the the end was coming, I didn't get a chance to listen to it. So very cool. So uh, and you could uh, Hoover. Where can everybody uh, catch you? Uh, Monday through Saturday. Well, actually, now since uh, since we are what we are in this world, uh, Monday through Sunday, three to seven on Rock 107 and Rock 107 dot com. All right, so check Hoover out. His show is great. Hopefully, this week we'll be getting back to the uh, Big Hair Happy Hour on Rock 107 with Hoover. And um, and of course, I think it's supposed to rain, so you probably will be on because it rains every goddamn Friday that this is on, <laughs> which is insane. Um, all right, so check out Hoover on Rock 107 and. Uh, before we get before we get going here, um, I want to thank um, Julian Gill and Mark Anthony K and Ken Keenan for having me on the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast. We just recorded it yesterday and it's out. I will share it on the Pot of the Hell page as well. Um, we did we talked about Van Halen one and Van Halen two. It was uh, it was a good time talking with those guys, and I think we're going to continue on with the the uh, the same guys. I think if we can get them for the uh, for the rest of the Van Halen albums on that podcast, it was a good time. And I also want to thank uh, Hoover here for hooking us up. Um, it was him, um, his his regular podcast partner, his, his nephew, and Dylan. They did an interview with Alice Cooper last week, and that is posted as well. I think that's already up on our page as well as Hoover's. Uh, cool interview. It was kind of cool just to see Alice kind of just lounging out there, shooting the shit with everybody. It was very cool. Myself and Hoover did an interview with Vinny Apice and Carmine oh. Apice. <laughs> They put out a, a tribute video for Dio for the 10th anniversary of his passing away. It's a song called Monsters and Heroes from their Sinister album, but it was recorded like one of those live things with everybody in a different spot. And um, we're going to talk about that a little more later, but we, we talked about that in the interview. And Hoover, I think we hit a lot of topics with those guys. We were on there for probably about 40 minutes, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we talked about his doo-wop years. We talked about Elf. We talked about Rainbow. We talked about Sabbath. Uh, we even talked about Rod Stewart or Carmine. Yeah, it was it was good. We hit, we hit a lot of stuff, and those guys were those guys were totally cool. And you know, Carmine was sitting there with his, his hat on, his pink shirt, and getting ready to <laughs> ready to move to Florida. So we will will definitely uh, uh, have I'll have Dylan put a link to to that interview as well in in the show notes for the show. So uh, very cool. And before we get rolling into this episode, we're going to play an interview that Hoover and BB did with the one and only Jesse James Dupree. So Dylan, play it. Hey, Jess, hey, how you doing? What's going doing, on? Man? Jess, I'm Mark Hoover, as you can see on the screen. I, I got my buddy Ryan here as well from the Potter Than Hell podcast. How you doing? Hello, guys. Doing great. Trying to get used to this Zoom thing. I don't know. I, I, can you? I, I guess you can see me okay? 
I could see yep. you fine, man. I could see you okay. fine. Okay. Great. Is this your first Zoom? I've done Zooms, but um, I just I'm, 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 <laughs> it's always just a swing at it. So, it's always just a swing at it. I hear you, man. I hear you. So you got something new out. It just came out on Friday, right? Yes, yeah, so we just released uh, just released uh, a, a country song and uh, with a, a band that I have called Jesse James Dupree and Dixie Inc. And it's called "It Didn't Fall from the Sky." It's a it's a salute and a tribute to our uh, to our American uh, truck drivers, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the guys that are out there keeping the supply chain going. That's awesome. And we all have our trucker hats on right now. I can see. There you go. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, you know, the the, the uh, you know, the first responders, we depend on them every day. And, and, and in a time like this, everybody, you know, I'm, I worry that sometimes people get complacent about, you know, just acknowledging, you know, the, the, the efforts that these guys make and the fact that they're still, still getting up and going in, you know, to work when we're staying at home. But uh, I just wanted to, with all due respect to nurses and doctors and everybody that, that we do talk about a lot, I wanted just to, to reach out about the truck drivers. So I wrote a song called It Didn't Fall From The Sky. And uh, and it came from an organic, honest place, and uh, very proud of it. It's uh, it, we cut a video for it. I had truck drivers from all across the country. I had them uh, send me, upload me footage of their trucks and such. And so we we literally built the video during the quarantine here at the house. How about how about the actual recording of the song during the quarantine? How, how did that work? Well, out? I, I have a I have a recording studio here at the house. So it's, okay. And uh, just brought you know everybody. Uh, the guys came over. Well, you know my son's on drums. So in mm -hmm. Roman who uh who plays uh bass and jackal always he just lives right up the street and so you know we, he uh our families are kind of intermingled so uh but so we we lay down the basics and such and then brought the legendary don wayne reno came down from nashville and laid down the banjo and just killed it and then uh hank jr's keyboard player joey huffman came over and laid the keys, keys down on it that's awesome yeah yeah jesse uh we want to thank you from the Pot of the Hell podcast. 75% of us are actually professional firefighters. And our one buddy, BC, he, is a, he was a truck driver for five years. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, th those guys are so underappreciated. And, uh, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank you. So uh, do you guys think you're going to actually, once this quarantine thing is, you know, done and over with, do you guys think you're going to actually try to get out on the road with, uh, with the Dixie? Well, Jack, 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 well I, I just finished – Right before the pandemic, we finished a two-week run of uh, Dixie Inc. dates that went really great, and uh, that was in between Jackal's schedule because you know we were Jackal was supposed to have just been we would have just now been finishing up a month worth of dates out to the West Coast and back, and all of that got pushed back to toward the end of the year. Hopefully, um, waiting on the agent to piece all that puzzle together. Um, but uh, Jackal is slated to play uh, starting in July. We got a couple of shows. Uh, still interested. It'll still be interesting to see if they happen or not, or how they happen, or you know what boundaries are put on the crowds and that kind of thing. But um, we're just keeping an open mind. And I mean, the the, the you know the the uh, story changes or not changes. The, the story evolves every day with you know the virus and are people building up antibodies to it. And you know it's uh, uh, um, it's just something we just got to kind of wade through and one step at a time to see if we can get back to some live shows. Right. Um, another question, uh, 2008, when you guys released uh, Rev It Up and Go Go, now yeah. you said your, your son is the drummer. Is, was he on that album as well? Um, now, that was uh, Mike Froge uh, played with. That, that was an interesting album because uh, part of the album was rock and the other part was country, the original Jesse James Dupree and Dixie Inc., the Rev It Up and Go Go album right. is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can guess it's out there. You should, that's a great album. Right. Let me tell you, the song Bite on there is Jackal to a T. We love that bite, song. Bite and Tank and uh, Drop Dead Ready. I mean, every, I mean, I, I'm so proud of that album. I heard it the other day. I hadn't listened to it in a while and I listened to it. And I mean, it was, that was a, uh, that was a really great record that I'm proud of. And I'm proud of, you know, not only because of the songs, but I mean, I had Charlie Starr from Black Race Folk playing guitar and, and Mike Froze, who played with Zach Wilde for a while and, and many other bands, Double Drive and other bands, and, uh, and then Roman on bass. And then I had another portion of the record, the other half of the record was, was me and Roman and Charlie from Blackberry Smoke, and then the, uh, Richard and Fred, the drummer and the guitar player from Kentucky Headhunters. And we, we recorded that half of the record as an old-time radio show. 
If you get a chance, right. go check it out. Jesse James and Green Dixie, the Rev It Up and Go Go album. And then, uh, and then we've got the new single, It Didn't Fall From The Sky. And I've got another full country Dixie Inc. album that's all country that's in the can ready to come out hopefully sooner rather than later now that now that the cat's out of the bag that I've been recording some country stuff right now is this new album Jesse was this all recorded during the quarantine or did you have tracks laid down no, before this? no no the, the, the country album the whole country album was done for about a year now and I've just been you know trying to figure out how and when I'm going to put it out uh just wanted it to feel right and i I took the band out on the road is because I felt like I needed to get some road stink on it and just to see how it went over live, you know, and, and it went over great. And, um, and now I'm now with everything evolving, like it did with the pandemic and then me writing the song, it didn't fall from the sky, uh, which is, I mean, we put it up on YouTube, put a video up on YouTube and within just a, a week, week or week and some days, it's up to like 10, 75,000 views without any promotion to speak of. So that's pretty amazing that, you know, word of the song has traveled. So we just pushed it out through Universal this past Friday. It's available on iTunes and Spotify. And, and I'm just going to run, I'm going to run this single out and, and try to celebrate our truck drivers and, and the fact that we got a great song. And it's also a tribute to the 70s trucker song. Remember the great, like, Eastbound and Down with Jerry Reed and, yeah. and uh, you know, the C.W. McCall and all those great trucking songs. So it's uh, hopefully can take its place alongside those greats. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's talk about your bourbon. We, well, yeah, let's talk about. Let's go. Let's go down that highway. You know, yeah. you got to keep the truckers involved. You know, they're 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 sending your bourbon all over God's creation. We got one right here. There you go. <laughs> yeah. that's, good. that's good. That's the liquid America. <laughs> oh, I've gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, tell us. Uh, it, you have you have like the regular. You know what? How, here's probably a better question. How did you actually start? What got you? Because well, I. You know, you actually originally made a wheat beer too. Well, you right? guys are uh, you guys are are in Pennsylvania, so you know Pennsylvania is a, a little bit more of a difficult state to to get your liquor distributed in. And they, I've been very fortunate that they wrapped all up around the regular Jesse James bourbon. But they've also been special ordering the honey and the spice uh, bourbon as well as the single barrel Tennessee whiskey that we have, and uh, and the new Devil's Devil cinnamon whiskey that I got out. You can special order all that. You can get all of that on the Pennsylvania, uh, 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 the dot com for whatever the fine wine and spirits. Good luck uh, right. with that. It's been crashing for five weeks here, Jesse. <laughs> oh, has it? Okay. Well, you can swing by the liquors. I mean, liquor stores can get it too if they don't already have it. And, um, but that uh, Pennsylvania has been good to us. You know, it's given us a shot and, and to let us start selling the Jesse James bourbon up there. But it, we have uh, the honey bourbon, the regular bourbon, the spice bourbon. Spice bourbon is like Captain Morgan on steroids. It'll make Captain Morgan fall to his knees and beg for forgiveness. <laughs> It's good stuff. And the honey, the honey bourbon is the best honey on the market because we cheated. All, all the other honey bourbons were out first, and um, and we were able to blind taste sample with our recipe until we hands down were beating everybody else. So it is the best honey bourbon out there. Awesome. Yeah, I love to get my hands on some of that honey bourbon because. Uh, well, you, you any go to your whenever you do swing to your Pennsylvania liquor store, just tell them to get the honey bourbon, and they can get it. It's not a problem. Okay, I'll tell them you said so. <laughs> and try the devil's devils get the devil's devil's cinnamon whiskey it'll light you up it's uh Oof. it's the hottest cinnamon whiskey out there yeah perfect i love it hey how about the vfw let's talk about that with with hoover being a being uh, a veteran there i know you're doing some with the unmet needs because let me tell you the veterans don't get enough credit around here you know not only truck drivers but the veterans need a little shout out too why don't you talk about yep. the uh, unmet needs you're, you're doing for donations yeah, we've, we've been working with the VFW now for over a year, and uh, and they're partners with us out in Sturges at the Full Throttle Saloon. They, uh, they're, they're, the official destination is, you know, is at the Full Throttle Pappy Hoyle Campground for the VFW organization, and we have been raising money throughout the year for the unmet needs. Uh, it's an incredible uh, streamlined uh, method to help veterans that does away with all the bureaucracy. If the uh, veterans, if they find themselves in financial hardship from being deployed or from, you know, something related, service related, uh, then they can qualify to get a grant that they can get within 20 days if they qualify. Nice. And it gets vetted out right there in the VFW offices really quickly. And uh, and it's, it's an amazing, it, it, I've met the recipients, some of the recipients for the, for the Unmet Needs program, and it's very rewarding and I, I, I genuinely am proud to be working there's not a more tightly run and better organized uh, uh organization 
than the VFW. And uh, there's a lot of veterans, a lot of great veterans uh, organizations out there. But the VFWs, I mean, they are just a hundred, 120 years uh, old now. I mean, so you, I guess you know they finally got it, got it going on after 120 years. They they got it down. Jesse, you definitely keep yourself busy, man. You got so much going on. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I, I'm very fortunate to be able to do things that I love, and it's all synergetic, and everything lifts everything up. We uh, we enjoy working with a lot of great partners, from Harley Davidson to the VFW organization, to, you know, to uh, the Jesse James Bourbon, um, and, and all the you know the the liquor stores and the different distributors that we work with. And I mean, we got a lot we got a lot going on, but it all works together because at the end of the day, I end up on stage and. People ride Harleys are standing out there. Veterans are out there. People that are drinking bourbon are out there. So it all comes together for a family reunion every night we play. Great. Uh, Jesse, a uh, question about the Lumberjack song. Okay. When, where, how did you ever incorporate the chainsaw into that song? When did that start? Uh, well, it started before the band ever recorded the first album. We played. Uh, we used to play a place called Charlie Magruder's in Atlanta. And we held this, held the uh, sales and attendance record, and um, for the um, for the for the venue. And I knew I could get away with murder, and uh, and so I, 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 and the place was made of wood, like a lot of wood, beautiful cherry wood and such. And I, I told the club owner. The club owner was an excitable fella, and uh, he. He uh, had a couple of heart attacks, but he still kept doing a lot of cocaine. And uh, in spite, uh, he still did it anyway. But um, but I told him I was going to bring a chainsaw, and he cut the place up one night. So I went and rented one, and, and I was cutting the place up, and he was fining us for cutting up furniture. And he fined me 500 bucks for cutting into the top of his bar. He was pissed. Mm. But uh, he didn't fire us because we were making him too much money overall. And um, But I, at the end of the night, we were jamming on a Jimi Hendrix a version of Jimi Hendrix's Red House, the old blue standard Red House. And uh, we were jamming on that. I took the chainsaw and played a lead break, and it worked. And uh, then, and then I, it, from there, uh, you know, I, uh, I took the chainsaw back and kind of just forgot about it. And the next thing you know, my dad shows up at a, a show in South Carolina. And he goes, "You've got to keep doing that." And uh, you got to keep doing. It. And he bought he had bought me a chainsaw, and, and so. Of course, with the chainsaw laying there, you know, I'm going to use it. And one thing led to another, and I uh, was pulling it out and cutting stuff up at all these different clubs. And then when we finally did get signed, the record company goes, you got to keep doing that. <laughs> Everybody just kind of kept playing forward and ended up being a big hit. Yeah, it's funny because the three of us, at, three of us here on the podcast, and we're testing our chainsaws. Every time we'd start a chainsaw, that's what we're doing, the lumberjack when It's hilarious. Um, I have to kind of joggle your brain. Do you remember back M3 2013, you were doing the uh, lumberjack song and they turned the lights off on you, uh, the small stage? I don't know if you remember that. We were there. And uh, for, some, for some reason, I think the headline, you, you closed the shorter stage and then somebody was closing, starting the main stage and they cut the lights off on you. I don't know if you remember that. Um, I do remember that, but I don't remember the details of it. Right. Um, I think we still finished out our set. Right. You definitely did. It was just, you know, it was funny that you, you had to do, do Lumberjack in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, um, I don't, I'd like to go back and play that festival. I mean, it was a night. They, they, they do it. They did it upright. You know? I mean, it was a cool place. Right. That was great. They still have that festival? Uh, yes, they do. I think they were supposed to have number 10 this year, and, and, it, and of course, it got canceled. Yeah. Oh, man, they, they need to get us back. Yeah, absolutely. We need to come back and play that again. Definitely. That, that's, that's the highlight of our, our concert venue is going to M3 because everybody's there. So, but they're not having it this year, right? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, the, we, uh, we're playing, there's the, like the Kentucky State Fair and the Oklahoma State Fair, those guys have, you know, they've already had us cut videos to let everybody know that we're, that we're, that it's, that it's still on, yeah. Outstanding. Great. Well, Jesse, Jesse one, one more ahead, question. Man. Favorite Jackal song? Um, I Stand Alone. Love it. Great yeah, tune. that's, Great that, tune. if I, if I, if I could only keep one, that's the one I would keep. And Jesse, Perfect. my, my final question, I, I, I know you're very, uh, Good friends with Brian Johnson. Any ACDC rumors 
you could hint at? There's all kind of rumors, but I'm not talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe you had some of that bourbon in you. Might, something might slip. You know, I was keeping my fingers nah, crossed. <laughs> I, I'm friends with Brian, and I intend to stay that way. So, Gotcha, man. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Appreciate you uh, joining us today in these uh, weird times on Zoom, and uh, hopefully you get better at it. I'm still learning myself. Well, thank you very much. And uh, guys, check out It Didn't Fall From the Sky, all your uh, streaming and download platforms, and check the video out on YouTube. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Jesse. Thank See you. Guys, have a great day. See Take you. care. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview with uh, Jesse, the one and only Jesse James Dupree. Uh, BB and Hoover, give us the lowdown on, on this interview. Well, you had me as a, as a guest for the first time after asking me about 50 sometimes uh, <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago uh, when we were doing our Dio songs. And after we got done recording, I think we just started shooting the shit about Jackal for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And uh, I happen to mention, I think I have Jesse James' uh, email. And I reached out to him, and he's like, yeah. And uh, he set up a time, and uh, you know, we, we got him on the podcast. Yeah, it was great. You know, he, I think he's really trying to promote this. You know, it, it's fun. Jesse James is pretty one of the hardest, the probably the hardest working guy in, in music. It seems like he's kind of taking a break and kind of going a little countryside because he's trying to promote his song, It Didn't Fall From The Sky, which is has like a country, southern feel to it. You know, for us being first responders, but he's, this is this is out for those truck drivers because th these guys are delivering toilet paper and bourbon. So, you know, they don't get a lot of credit. So I think he's just trying to get those guys out there you know just a great song you know and it has a little country feel to it but it's jesse james dupree he's got that greediness to him but a great song we talked about his bourbon talked about a couple shows we bc we talked about the the m3 show and the lights went out well, well they I mean, turned the lights out yeah and he, he, he didn't remember that but uh yeah it was it was a great great episode and you know once again i want to thank hoover for that opportunity the week after that, remember I used to go to Bike Week, though? Uh -huh. He was down there promoting his uh, bourbon. The Myrtle Beach. I said, hey. And I said, what about last week? They turned the lights on me. And he's like, fuck that shit, motherfucker. Brett Michaels, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember who was starting on the main stage. Because he was on the that little stage. Yeah. But Brett Michaels wasn't even actually starting. It was his when time started. to start. Yeah. He didn't start, though. Yeah. yeah. Fucking diva. All right. <laughs> All right, so since we're uh, Hoover got us that got BB that cool interview with him, let's talk a little Jackal tonight, you guys. Um, we'll go around the horn here. Give us your first, um, you know, your first instance of how you heard into heart of Jackal and got into them and everything. And uh, BC, how about you? I think you're, I think you're actually of of us three here, the the one that got into Jackal first. I think I, 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 it's very faint. Uh, Meadow Edge magazine. You know, they had the news. Uh, you, I guess a little part of like uh, Atlantic Georgia, hard rock out of Atlantic Georgia, Jackal, blah, blah, blah. And it said some other things. And I think you mentioned the chainsaw and shit. I'm like, chainsaw? What the fuck? So I think that's how I got interested. And then I looked them up. And like I said, I put that first album on. I was like, ooh. I've been hooked since. How about you, Hoover? What's your what's your Jackal story? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I probably caught the, uh, the Lumberjack video on MTV back in the day. Uh, and I, I was kind of into them, and you know, I, I didn't buy their album. And uh, I think that album came out in '92. Yes. Uh, and then I think it was '94. I, I just found the ticket stub earlier, but uh, you know, I'm hanging outside on my back porch. It's upstairs in my office. Uh, but they open up for Aerosmith on the Get a Grip tour at the old Coors Light Amphitheater at Montage when it used to be on the ski slope. And those guys absolutely blew Aerosmith off the stage. And it was like the next day I went out and, bought, and started buying albums by them. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! I I forgot I that I don't remember them playing out there. I remember yeah. I remember the, the the stage on the ski slope for sure. We saw a lot of cool shows over there. Uh, very cool. How about you, BB? Um, the first place I saw Jackal was in '93 when they released the "When Will It Rain" uh, video on MTV. That's where that's I didn't I never I never saw the the Lumberjack one. I saw the "When Will It Rain" and it was they didn't release that until '93. So I'm, you know, a couple months behind it. But after that, I think it, it was another another one of the videos they did. Maybe it was a lumberjack. I'm not 100 percent sure, but sucked me right in. And those, I think, those first first two albums are 
no skippers. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, and like I said, I, I think uh, BC is the one that brought Jackal to my attention. And I remember the uh, the first time we saw them, they opened up for Damn Yankees up in Binghamton at the arena. <laughs> was it was it Redneck Punk? Is the mic stand was when the mic stand was that was the shotgun? Yeah, like the goose. And gun. then like, he yeah. shot it like it was scares a shell the shit out of it. It was like <laughs> boom! Like holy fuck! Was what, it ready like, for that? <laughs> such a, a a cool band, and and they played many times around here. And uh, did anybody here catch when they did what would they do like a hundred shows in fifty days or something like that? They yeah, yeah. they got in the Guinness Book and they were pretty much traveling around on a flatbed truck and yeah. like playing. I think they played in uh, in Edwardsville, I think, in, in the parking lot down at down at Jitterbugs. I want to say down there, and that was one of the shows that they did for their uh, for their run at a Guinness Book World Record. Yeah, because they have that, and then they have. They did like twenty one shows in twenty four hours or something, or yeah, it was it fifteen was, shows in twenty four hours. Yeah, and it had like something that. to do with states or something like that. So it was so you know our area at least got one of those. But uh, <clears throat> always a great band live, and I, I really think that Jesse James Dupree is, and he's not a he's not a guy that you hear in in an amazing front man conversation, but when you see him live, you're like, why isn't this guy mentioned in that? He's 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 very very dynamic on stage, like uh, you know, uh, he's like a he's he's like a charming guy. I think he's he's like a like a southern version of David Coverdale, yeah. of of how he you know how he uh, comports himself on stage. So I, I just I think they're a fantastic band live, and uh, they're a band that. And actually, I looked it up. I think uh, we're recording this sh- this show on the twenty sixth of May. On the 29th, they were supposed to play down at Penn's Peak. Mm. So in three days. We would be going to see Jackal if it wasn't for all this bullshit going on. And they're probably one of those bands we've probably seen though those guys the most. They're probably top five easily. Between I've seen them. I've seen them probably eight or nine times at least. I'm in the same boat. I've probably seen them as many times as well. Yeah, because I, yeah. I don't think I missed a show that they've played around here. No, Tinks. They played Tinks, Staircase. Tinks, Staircase. The... Boy, that that night is Tinks. Tr- I... Sherman Theater. Sherman, Sherman yeah. Theater. I think my eardrums are still broken from the Tinks night. Tinks <laughs> show was Tinks show was that was a good that was a good goddamn show that night. So yeah, so I mean, you guys out there, if you if you do get a a chance to see Jackal, go check them out because I'm sure they were they will. I think they already rescheduled the date for the Penn's Peak show. I think it's sometime in September. Because I think I, I remember seeing that on their on their website. So um, if you want to know for sure, go to Penn's Peak, uh, you know, for people in, in our local area. If not, go to, I'm sure it's like jackal.com or something like yeah. that. Check them out. And and it was cool listening to this. Uh, I even listened to, you know, and Jackal's not a, like, they're a band that, like, you could throw on at any time. And they it's just like, it takes you right back to the when you just first put them CDs in. Yes, CDs, people. And you can, I mean, I think I could, I like all the albums. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not that guy where they're all my favorite album. No, they're not. But like there, you could throw any album on and, and just enjoy it. And it's like, just even like the, the mellower stuff is good on it because I think they have a, a, a good sense of humor with some of the songs that they, that they do. And a lot of them are the slower ones. If you really listen to two of them, you're like, Right. Okay, I get what you're talking you about here, <laughs> and uh, and I, I I really like that about those guys. I don't think they take themselves too seriously in live. They are just a rocking band. The uh, we saw them at the staircase, and we were up above the stage, <laughs> and then when the drummer ripped off his pants, he was just sitting there, fucking speedo like a la Tommy Lee. We were like, ooh, and we were like, you you couldn't help but look. Like right down on him for the whole show because that's like right where we were and it was like okay just watch the guitar guys watch the guitar guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but he's he's such a freaking great drummer to watch though I mean yeah. he's like one of them guys he's like you know like like what I call like a spider drummer because his hands are up above the kit all the time and everything like that he's a very interesting drummer to watch although I do wish that we watched him from a lower angle at, <laughs> at that show. He's always got a good drum yeah. set too. Man. Yeah, and they were evil like... Evil Knievel drum set? The Evil Knievel drum set, yeah, yeah that's, drum, that's cool. Flame. He always has... Yeah, the, the, the Flames one, yeah, and yeah. they had the like the, the exhaust flames. pipes on the, on the, yeah, on the bass drums. Yeah, remember the... Like, a, uh, old, uh, like an old Mac no, 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 pickup no. truck. Like the airplane uh, firefighter... Uh, not firefighter, oh. stuff that... Uh, God, fuck, World War II... Like, oh, a, yeah. like yeah. a World War II fighter? Yeah, he had one, something like that. Okay. 
Oh, I'm sure. Oh, Because he he's had a bunch of different cool ones, but uh, but great live. Um, Hoover, what's your? What's I, your... I, I, I liked uh, as as time progressed, probably the early 2000s. Uh, he combined his guitar with the chainsaw, yeah. so you had both. Not only the chainsaw, but the, the guitar was also a chainsaw, chainsaw. which is a, a very cool, very very cool guitar. Probably has to be the only one of its kind. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. And, and like, who who would have ever thought that a, a chainsaw would be in a musical <laughs> instrument, like used in a song? And and I like on, um, I don't know, is it headed for destruction? Where it's it's combined with like the talk box, the talk box, yeah, yeah. And it's was like holy shit! Like you know, you think it couldn't get any freaking crazier or cooler when he was doing the doing it with just the chainsaw, and then then you have the talk box in there too. Uh, sorry, Aaron Martell, I know he, he probably really hates the chainsaw with the talk box, but uh, just a great band live. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're going to. Um, Give uh, our, our our own personal top ten songs of uh, of Jackal, or or I'll say our top ten for. How like, about we right do now. top six? Oh, oh, we are doing six. Okay. Yeah. I'm, oh, thank see goodness! That? I'm like I'm unprepared. It's like the <laughs> great. Shit. Who were you? That's that's see that's another thing how I roll. I'm glad I'm glad they got these guys here because Dylan would be yelling at me too. So you're gonna have to you're playing the role of Dylan tonight. Will be BB. <laughs> I, I, I had enough to do. That. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and you could easily do 10 or 12 oh, or 15 sure. or whatever. So right. we're six. We're doing six. And I know there's no way in hell that Dylan's going to cut that out. So my bad. Which, you know, whatever. So let's, uh, since you guys got to talk to Jesse James Dupree, let, let's mean let's mean BC go first and then we'll, we'll break it up. Sounds uh, good. So BC, uh, we'll, 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 and guys, we'll do what we usually do. We'll let BC read. Actually, BC will read his list. I'll read mine, then we'll, we'll talk about them. We'll go around the horn. What do, we, what do you got for a list, BC? And then you can talk about your songs, too. I'm going to uh, start off with, uh, from 2002, uh, Relentless album, uh, Curse on You. I mean, it starts off with, this, like, jungle, and it sounds like a woman moaning. And then it kicks in, it, and then a little mellow guitar, and then it just kicks in, the, the guitar kicks in, kapow! Kapow! <laughs> With that, to me, it's just cranking riff, and the drums, and <coughs> classic, uh, Jacko song, I think, I mean, again, I don't think Jacko's anything, I mean, they're not a technical band, I guess you would say, they're just fucking rocking, rock and roll, in your face, fun, fun music. Uh, my second one would be uh, Screwdriver off 2012's uh, Best in the Show. Drum start. Love that shit. It kicks in with the kind of like, the, to me almost like a grindage uh, guitar riff, I think. Love the back and vocals. There's a lot of songs. And to me, like you like uh, the... The woo-hoos and the woo -hoos. The woo -hoos. I just love, when a band has kick-ass back and vocals, I'm, I'm hooked. And they make the hey, hey, hey. No solo on the song either. Mm -mm. But you don't need it with a uh, riff like that. Then uh, we were just talking about how they, they like to do uh, lyrically uh, comedians a little bit. Uh, my third song is going to be from the same album from 2012, Better Than Chick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like better than Chick in BC? <laughs> I like Jack I, I mean, I guess it's catchy. It's very catchy. And I mean, there's a cool little solo in it. I like Lafton. I like laughing better than bitches. <laughs> I guess that song just always caught me. Uh, my fourth one to be uh, from 2010's uh, My Moonshine Kicks Your Cocaine's Ass is the, the song My Moonshine Kicks Your Cocaine's Ass. I love the, the bass and drums just started off and then... Uh, what? And then throughout the song and just <laughs> the chorus kicks in and the group voice just... How can you go around that song? Number five, uh, it's because I'm drunk. This is, could be my theme song uh, for most of my life from 2016's. I always pronounce this wrong. Ro 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 yeah. Roco. Roco. <clears throat> Rock out with your cock out. I, yeah. I, I, it's a slower tune, and it has like a, a kind of a country feel to it. We were talking about how he's doing this country theme for the truck drivers. I just I just laugh through it. I get, it you can re totally relate to this song. Just because I'm drunk. <laughs> and then uh, I... I think I'm going to finish off my number six that the song that pretty much started it all for me. I Stand Alone from the self-titled debut. This is the cl classic Jackal, straightforward rock, the kick-ass groove and riffs, and the backing vocals, and there's an extra solo in it. <laughs> Jackal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool list. Uh, I'll, I'll read mine here. I, 
I mean, you could have picked anything from the first first two albums easily, and I like to, to go a little little deeper on the tracks. My first song I picked, I picked Horns Up from uh, the 2012 Best in Show album. Um, it's got such a heavy groove, and I really like when this band gets... Uh, I don't know, gets their groove on, if you want to put it that way. Um, just a great, I love the, and it's got a great, a live feel to this song where you could you could picture them doing this live and with the, like a crowd participation part at the end. Yeah, everybody, yeah, it's just friggin' fantastic. Um, and, and it kind of seems weird because um, Jackal doing a song, Horns Up, they're not really a, a metal band, you know what I mean? Right. And you think metal when you hear that. But what I think of is when we when we saw Jackal down at the staircase, I couldn't tell you what song they were playing, and we were on the on the rail at the, at the table we were at, and Jesse was playing guitar, and he came over to the side of the stage, he looked it up us, and he gave us the fucking horns, and stuck his tongue out, and I was like, <laughs> and that's what made me want to pick this song because I, it, they're not a horns band, I think, uh, you know, they're more of a fist in the air band, I think. But uh, it was it was so cool, and I had to throw that song in there because of that. He like came right over, like right to us. I don't know, you guys may probably don't even remember it, and he just did like ah, like to us guys, like right to us. So that was kind of my, my personal thing with these guys. I just um, got the speedo burned into my mind. About that. Ah, see that B- <laughs> BC was too too busy checking out the package of the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> um, second song I picked was um, Secret of the Bottle from the from their second album, Headed for Destruction. I think that's that's the name of the album, right? No, or that's the song. I'm, well, anyway, uh, Secret of the Bottle. I, I like it. It starts out, this is BC's, uh, one, maybe another one of his theme songs, I Feel Better When I'm Drinking. Um, <laughs> yeah, Push, Come, Push Comes to Shove, the album is called. I'm sorry, it came out in 1994. Um, it's a great mellow song. It's get your flask and lighter out time when he starts this song. You know, it's just... Um, uh, and, and really, there's, there's a long solo break in this song. There's like three different sections of the mm-hmm. solos. And there's one part that there's like what the wah pedal sounds freaking fantastic. And it's just a, a cool song and it's, you know, the the dudes he you know, he just wants to be left alone and just have a have a drink or two. Number three, I'm gonna I gotta go from the debut album, Dirty Little Mind. D I R T E E E fucking Tell BC, love so that part. Dirty Little Mind. Absolutely. that song is just freaking great. It's got the gang vocals. Yeah, she's B A D. Like just, I, just like little shit like that in the songs. I just, I love it. Just makes it, and and that debut album is just is is stellar. I think it's it's, you know, and you know a lot of people complain that there wasn't a lot of good albums and a lot of rock music out in the '90s. This band and this debut album absolutely proves that wrong because it's fantastic. And then um, for the next one, I went to the 2010 album when Moonshine and Dynamite Collide album. And uh, loads of fun. Opening track on the album, straight up rocker. Um, great. It's got a. It's got a, a nice straightforward guitar solo in it. Nothing crazy. No ingve shredding. No crazy wah pedals or whammy bars. Just a good hard rock solo in the song. It's just really, really good. Straightforward. Just a, a, a great rocking tune. Fifth song. I, I went to the Rocco album as well. BC song all night radio. Uh, yeah, radio. All night rodeo. <laughs> It's got. To, it starts out with like a little groovy drum beat, and then the bass gets in there. You're almost like it's like almost got a funk feel to it. And uh, I like. There's like a behind the 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 drums and the bass. There's like this uh, like plinky guitar sound that's like underneath the the main guitar that you hear. This like when when you hear it, you'll know it. But it's it's really cool. It's got a great it's got a great groove. Um, and uh, Listen to this song. This is a great song to bang your woman to. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. Um, sorry, Dylan, but it is. It's just one of them songs you just want to freaking party. Um, you know, everyone, everyone come to party. It's fucking fantastic. I fucking love it. That's one of them. This band is a fucking fantastic band for partying. Like These, these guys are like a southern Van Halen. Just you get that party feel from these guys, and I, I actually, I'm so glad we did this because I hadn't listened to Jackal in a while, and I'm listening to this shit going, like, what the fuck am I gonna pick? But there was always them little nuggets in my head of, of what song, especially like horns up and stuff like that. And my my last song I picked is from the uh, 2002 Relentless album, um, Sparks from Candy. This song, this is one of the songs that they played at the staircase. Absolutely fucking fantastic. 
It's a, it's a deep track, but it rocks. The background vocals are fantastic. It's, it's hard and heavy. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a, a rockin' song. Uh, I love how he sings the, the verses on this song. It's the cadence that he uses. And I, I just like some of the inflections that he uses on a lot of the words. And he gives a lot of, uh, uh, like, tons of sexual innuendos in these songs. It's just crazy. So that's why, uh, you know, you get the party feel and you get the, you know, you just want to go out and party and, and get laid kind of vibe from these guys. And they absolutely throw down when it's time for them to, to rock, and they do. So um, there's my long-winded version of my six songs. Um, Hoover, what do, you, what do you think of our lists? I'm sorry, I muted I mute it myself because I kept opening beers. I didn't want to. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I forgot I muted myself. Okay, Dylan appreciates that. <laughs> yeah, we get you for doing it. Steve, I mean, your list horns up. I I, I do remember seeing that that uh, a couple times. Uh, Dirty Little Mind, which is on my list, we'll get to it in a little bit. Just an amazing song. I actually like the uh, the live version that showed up on the uh, Choice Cuts Greatest Hits album uh, back in the '90s. You, you hit some of these these deeper cuts that I haven't heard in a long, long time. And uh, I'm going to have to, after we're done with this recording, I'm going to have to go ch check most of these out, like uh, Secret of the Bottle and Sparks on Candy and stuff like that. Who, who do we have first? We had uh, BC? BC, yep. Okay. Uh, Curse on You, an amazing tune. Uh, Screwdriver, uh, Better Than Chicken. I haven't heard that song in a long time. Uh, I'm going to have to definitely, definitely listen to that. My Moonshine Kicks Your Cocaine Ass almost made my list. Uh, maybe if we did top 10, we could have did that. Uh, just because I'm drunk is also on my list, and I'll tell you a story about why I have that on my list when, when I get to it. And I Stand Alone, that was another song that just outside my list, uh, my top six, that, uh, again, if we did top 10, that definitely, definitely would have been on there. So, so far, so good, man. All right, cool. What do you think, BB? Uh, the Curse on You, the only thing I didn't like, it just takes a little bit to get in. Takes a little bit. T takes a little bit to, to get there. Quicker. But once it gets there, you know, punches you right in the face. Uh, Jeff Worley on guitar is just a fantastic player. His tone in that song's amazing. Screwdriver. How can you not love just the way he just pronounces screw? screw. Driver. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, like he's splitting it up for a reason, and he, all all the fans know the reason. <laughs> and then there's like there's 36 seconds left in the song. I love when he starts screaming the vocals. He goes. Hey, 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 there's clapping, there's background vocals. You know, just just a fantastic way to close the song. I loved it, loved it. Better Than Chicken. This is fucking your Jackal song. I don't know where we were. There was like, for a fucking month, you were singing, I like Putin better than chicken. And I was hoping you were going to pick this song. Because every time I think of Jackal in BC, this is the song I think of. So glad it is made it. Is that because he's list. such a pussy? Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, number four, uh, My Moonshine Kicks Your Cone King's Ass. It's just a fast, right out of the gate, rocking song. It almost has like that vibe, like at the chorus. It almost feels like Faster Pussycat's Bathroom Wall. It has like the same tone, groove, sound to it. Number five, Just Because I'm Drunk, that another one of your, you know, <laughs> th th this, this could be BC's greatest hits. <laughs> yeah, it just like BC's ready to fuck, but Renee wants to fight, you know, but... uh. It's find a cool kind of slower jackal song, maybe even quote unquote, maybe a little ballad in there, maybe a little ballad jackal song. You have to, you have to, you have well, to think it's about a little that. Ballady. A little ballad, a little ballad. And then, uh, you know, I stand alone. The drums out front, fantastic. Chris Worley, the Jess brother on drums, are fucking fantastic. And everybody just just knows that BC shits like you do. <laughs> Righty, horns up. I love the bass groove opening. And and once I heard it and it has like the O O O in it, that's like your <laughs> that's your magnet. You're you're there. You're hooked. And secret of the bottle, another slower jackal tune. Love how it kicks in. The solo is amazing. Perfect song to drink to. Song number three, dirty little mind. You know you got that. That's the debut album. You could throw a dart at that album and, and pick any one of those songs. Uh, loads of fun. Pedal to the metal. Kick ass jackal song. Prime example of what you want want out of a Jackal song. Love that song. Uh, number five, All Night Rodeo. The bass and the drums out front are so fantastic. It catches your ear right out of the gate. And then Sparks on Candy. A little heavier Jackal tune. And once again, J um, Jesse's vocals are great. And the background vocals are really, really good in this. It really caught my ear on this one. But uh, definitely two great lists. All right, cool. 
Uh, I'll do BC's list. BC, first of all, I apologize. You're not a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a chicken. Um, but you did pick. You did pick a good song, chicken. and um, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go reverse order here. I think. Um, I stand alone. If that, I'm, I'm so glad you picked that, and because that was the very first Jackal song that I heard, because I hadn't seen any of the videos. Um, you know, in Lumberjack, I don't know, it's like third or fourth song on the album or whatever, but like. That was like your down, 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 down. Like, as soon as you hear that song and the do do and the drums kick in, you are instantly freaking hooked. You're boom. You are there with these guys. Um, just because I'm drunk, I think that's reversed a little bit. Because you like the fight. <laughs> so, I think that might be a little reversed for you. That might be. Um, that's true. Uh, My Moonshine Kicks your, your Cocaine's Ass. That song is so cool. That's I love the what? I love, I love that. I, I'm like I said, I'm a sucker for like background vocals and crazy shit like that. Better than chicken. Who doesn't like Poontang better than chicken? Come on, <laughs> uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that one. A screwdriver. I want a screw. Maybe he wants to drink. He wants a little vodka and orange juice. That's Ooh, maybe. But maybe. he has a bourbon. He doesn't have a vodka. No, you know he's no. not a mixed drink like that. Vodka. But another cool song. Uh, Curse on you. That's a good. And, and that song I totally forgot about that song. That one I haven't hadn't heard in a, in a long time. Just a, a good. Good, solid Jackal song, but, like, good list. I mean, and there's no no bad Jackal list, to tell you the truth. Say, is there a bad Jackal list? But, uh, uh, yeah. what do you got for mine, BC? Horns up, I mean, cranking. I mean, you're, you're the immigrants. Horns up, I love that song. I mean, and then we went Dirty, Dirty Little Mind off the first album, which I think we already said there's not a bad tune off that album. And my Secret of the Bottle, which... I didn't want to put two Miller songs on, but I love that song. I feel better when I'm drinking. Don't we all? No truer words. Loads of fun, another rocking, and uh, all night rodeo. I mean, love that song. Love that, like you said, the, the tone, the feel. That whole album's like that, I think. And a lot of people, some people don't like it. I, don't know. I know you were you were telling me that, and I'm like, I, really? I was, I was reading it. I'm like, really? Like like Jackal fans don't like that album? A few, yeah. Like, really? Oh, I wonder why. That, I, that's a fantastic album. Three, three or two would have been on my, my list if it was... A little like, longer, yeah. Like Hoover said, if we would 10 songs. Or well, we would have been in the top 10 if BB didn't knock it down to fucking six. <laughs> in the beginning of the show. <laughs> Let's go, BB. <laughs> I have to go home and shampoo my rug. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. There's mine and BC's list. We all went around the table here. Um, hope you guys enjoy them them songs. Uh, they will be in our Spotify playlist. It'll be in the show notes. I hope you guys enjoy that. And rock out to some jackal. Crack a beer. Crack a bourbon. Uh, you know, make yourself a screwdriver if, if, you, if that's your choice. Or even just have a, a Coke or Jack and Coke, BB. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I just I need to comment that at least BB is wearing the appropriate headwear today. He's got his cock of the walk official jackal hat on tonight, which is uh, it's good to see that one back. I'd rather see that than the Boston Red Sox hat <laughs> any day. So uh, wait, 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 wait. He's a Red Sox fan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, who? Yeah, he actually he he wore his Boston Red Sox hat in New York City when we went to meet Zach Wild. It was almost a fight. And Zach Wild goes, man, you got big balls. You, your balls are bigger than mine wearing that hat in this city. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Yeah, right. Well, they, they figure there's, there's, you know, some mentally challenged people walking around, so See, they didn't ma- bother him. Maybe that's why we got, we, we got, maybe if we did that, we could have used the, the handicap since I had my, I tore that's, my ACL that day. That's true. Yeah, that was, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was yeah, a long yeah. day for sure. Yeah. We're walking on the black room. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just glad to see you have the proper head around it, yes. especially for this show. So uh, we're it's going to be time for our hidden gem. But before we do, uh, I talked about this song a little bit before, Monsters and Heroes, uh, the Dio tribute version. We are going to play the audio version of the video that these guys did, and it's uh, Carmine and, Carmine Apice, Carmine Apice and Vinny Apice on drums, Jim Crean on vocals. <laughs> Artie Dillon on guitar, and he actually does the, uh, like, put the video together. And uh, James Caputo is the bass player. And the lyrics for this song are written by uh, Paul Shortino of uh, Rough Cut fame. So uh, Dillon is going to play Monsters and Heroes from the A Peace album called Sinister, and the song is Monsters and Heroes.
All right, and we're back for our hidden gems. I hope you guys enjoyed Monsters of Heroes from the Apice, Apice Brothers from the Sinister album. That was the uh, audio from the video version from the Dio tribute video that they put out. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I think it's a great song. Uh, Jim Crean's vocals on it was fantastic. And like we said, uh, Hoover and I and uh, Hoover's partner Ryan interviewed those guys. They were they were super cool. So uh, and I'll, I will post that video as well. So. Uh, I'll post a video and, and maybe we'll throw the audio version on this maybe in, as an as a bonus thing. So uh, time for a little hidden gem time. So uh, we will start with let's see let's start with BC this week because he's gonna he's gonna start off with the fucking wow factor here. <laughs> the wow factor. Uh, it's not too often I get to sit down and actually uh, scope music up without rushing. I hate it. One day I'm gonna be able to sit down and listen to tunes all day long. I thought you were Irish. What's that? What? <laughs> Anyways, I was uh, scoping music out, and then I forget what I was listening to, and then you go down, you may also like. I'm like, eh, let's see, click on a few of them, eh, eh. And the third one I picked uh, was Reverence, with uh, Gods of War is the name of the album. Uh, it, it's like, eh, it's good heavy music, and the vocals are very, like, reminiscent of uh, Queen Drag, I thought. Not all of them, but... But, I, I mean, I want to definitely get into these guys more. They have a good sound. So, uh, check them out. All right. Reverence for BC. Uh, Hoover, what do you got for us, my friend? All right. Well, uh, you know, today I actually saw um, uh, Gilby Clark posted a uh, video on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, he was playing. I didn't get a chance to, to uh, watch it, but it made me think about an album I had that he was involved with uh, a couple of years back, probably like the early 2000s, uh, called Colonel Parker. Uh, the album was rock and roll music, had uh, the X Stray Cat, uh, Cat Slim Jim Phantom on it. Really groovy album, and uh, that's actually sitting on my uh, stereo for the next thing I, I want to listen to. Probably haven't listened to that in about 15, 20 years. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that album. No, no. Mm -mm. So that's my hidden gem for the week. That's I'll a, be checking that out later cool. after we get done with this call. Oh, oh cool. What was, the, what was the name of the album? It was Colonel Parker. What was the name of the album? Rock and roll music. Came out in... Uh, 2001. I just Googled it as we're talking. All right, cool. Very it has cool. like a T-Rex, Rolling Stones, Mata Hoople kind of feel to it. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, I have to check them out for sure. Uh, BB, what do you got? Uh, usually I take the left turn off the path, but today I'm going to stay on the path of the jackal. Uh, <laughs> we're going back to 1993. Beavis and Butthead. Oh, I can't. From the Beavis and Butthead Experience album. Jackal has a song in there. It's called Mental. Masturbation, BC. Uh, fantastic. You know, just like a regular, awesome, just balls to the wall, punch in the throat, jackal Sweet song. Boy. And then on the end, you know, Beavis and Butthead, they're like, uh, what, do you, what do you think he's really talking about? Uh, uh. <laughs> and it's just, a, it's just hilarious. And uh, I think I heard that song like once before, like back in the day. But, you know, after I, I did some research, fantastic song, great music. You know, just a, just funny to throw that on there with, with Beavis and Butthead. But... Yeah, the song is Mental from the 1993 Beavis and Butthead Experience album. Yeah, that was, uh, they played that song on the live album they put out, too. Yeah. Is it on there? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. What is it called? Yeah, I'm going to have to, that have first to one. look it up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not the fourth round of the, the first one, the back in the day. The live in it's Dallas one? Is that it, Rich one? No, it's not that one. It's actually not on, it's, it's not, not on, on, it's not on iTunes, no. I forget. No, Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead. Okay. There you go. Good job, so, BC. So they do play Mental Masturbation on Night of the Living Dead album. Thanks, <laughs> BC. Uh, and I am also going to keep the hidden gem in the Jackal realm also. This was, a, I think we picked this up at one of the shows, BC. We did. We did. Um, it's the Jackal Staying Alive CD. It came out in 1998, and it's uh, it's got, it's got like... One, it's got like five original songs on there, three covers, and then three live songs. So I think we got it for ten bucks at the time. So eleven songs for ten bucks in like nineteen ninety eight was actually pretty good. We got we bought that somewhere that they were because I, mine is signed. Mine's on the wall signed. Hey, you know what? Is it? I think I don't think mine's signed. You sure? No, mine's not signed. I wonder where they were. No, well, it you had know, to be I, the staircase it, or Tinks. We might have bought that at Tinks. Dugo might have my signed one. But I, I do have another one. This is actually an original copy of it, though. What was the first year for fucking Blackberry Smoke? That'll tell you. 
It's either eighty. No, Blackberry I mean, Smoke is two thousands. Blackberry Smoke. Is I want to say I have the. I'll have to put the picture up because I have that and I have the ticket stub in a frame. Right? Okay. It's it's either not a ninety six or ninety eight. Okay. Yeah. So um, this this CD it's really good. Uh, the original songs are Problem Crush, Can't Beat It with a Stick, Open for Business, Street Went Legit. The cover tunes are. Live wire, a uh, that's the ACDC version, by the way. Give me back my bullets and uh, Aerosmith's nobody's fault. And then they do dumbass country boy twice as ugly and locked and loaded live. So uh, cool CD. Actually, I just listened to it yesterday. It uh, it's still See, still rocking. It's isn't it funny how like like that album cut the crap. It's not it's not on like like Apple Music. Like not a few of them. Are. Yeah, a couple of them aren't, so I don't know. It, it's I probably a publishing Spotify. thing or something. Uh, yeah, I didn't even look on Spotify for them. I'm not sure if they're on there or not. So um, there's our hidden gems this week, you guys. We have uh, Jackal Staying Alive uh, for me. That's definitely not on any of the streaming things. Band called Reverence for BC. The album's called Gods of War. BB's uh, Mentally Masturbating. I mean, the song is yeah. mental, yes! mental Masturbation from the Beavis and Butthead experience um, experience <laughs> and hoover's got a gilby clark album uh, colonel parker rock and roll music so uh you know check out the check out the hidden gems there's some cool shit there bc played a little bit of the uh the reverence for us during our, our little break here so it, it it sounds good i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna have to check it out BC. Okay, good job check it out. good job maybe that there'll be a band maybe in 10 years now i'll be doing a whole episode on it who knows <laughs> um doubt it but who knows so uh so check them out for sure and let's get back into our lists and um Hoover, why don't you go next for the list, my friend? All right, number one on my list, uh, Redneck Punk. Uh, it's one of those songs, you see those guys play it live. I, I love the double bass drum as the song is e- ending, and the, just the back and forth, the Redneck, Redneck, Redneck Punk. Uh, punk. And it's uh, uh, quite a bit of my songs are going to end up coming off the, uh, the the first album. But uh, that is, I, I hear that song, man. I, I just, I, I get stoked. Uh, Dirty Little Mind, uh, another fantastic song and I, I know that's off one of their earlier albums but uh the live version uh i ended up buying the choice cuts i saw it in gallery of sound back in the 90s which was one of their greatest hits album but the uh the version is a uh, a live version on that album and i, I it, 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 like i prefer that a thousand times over the, the studio version of that I, I think it's just absolutely fantastic uh we're talking about chainsaws earlier and even in uh, our interview earlier with jesse james he does it again on Headed for Destruction, and and I just love that talk box on there. And it, man, it's that that's just that's just cool, you know. Um, just because I'm drunk, uh, when those guys played at the Sherman, it was actually uh, a, a song that wasn't even released yet. The album wasn't out yet, and he introduced it as a new song that was coming up. And I just thought that was such an amazing song. And after after they got done, I actually had to like put it in my phone, send myself an email, be like. When this album comes out later this year, I have to go buy it, which was the, at, uh, how do we pronounce it earlier? The uh, Roku. 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 Yeah. Roku. So I ended up buying that album almost as soon as it came out because, you know, he played that song live at the Sherman Theater and it, it was just a, a, a great tune. Uh, going back again, uh, I'm, I'm digging into the uh, first album, uh, She Loves My Cock. It was one of those, <laughs> those songs that... I tell you what, man, it, it has a great riff, and I, I, I think the uh, the hook is fantastic in that song. Uh, I mean, th- they could have changed the title of that song to anything else, and that just would have been an amazing song. But uh, it's one of those jukebox songs I like to play, just so everybody's turning their head and looking at the jukebox, <laughs> being like, what the hell is this on the jukebox, you know? <clears throat> and, and then, of course, uh, to end the list, Lock and Load It, uh, just, just the fact that... You know, uh, Jesse and Brian Johnson have been friends for years. I actually uh, ran into Jesse when uh, ACDC played their dress rehearsal show down at the uh, Mohegan Sun Arena. Uh, I happened to be walking in the uh, the luxury suites upstairs, and I saw Jesse James Dupree. Uh, I got to dig out that picture. I actually took I took a selfie that night with him uh, when he was down for that show. But uh, just him and Brian exchanging vocals on that man. That's just uh, one kick-ass song. I, I said this years ago when Brian left. Unfortunately, Brian and, Je- and Jesse were such great friends, but I think Jesse really could have pulled off filling in for Brian Johnson for those dates that he missed a couple of years ago on that ACDC tour. I just I just think he has that style, and he could pull off the Bond Scott and the Brian Johnson stuff, and uh, that's my list. Oh, man. Wow, that's I never even thought of that. 
Dave Sinise stuff. That's that's a great freaking point. That would have been a wow. That would have been a better ticket sell. Well, you know, it's probably it, that's what it is. It's probably the ticket sell. More people want to see Axl Rose sing ACDC than Jesse James. Well, because a lot of people be going, "Who is that? Who is Jesse James the Yeah, yeah. which is which is yeah. criminal, absolutely criminal. Yes. All right, BB, what's your well, list? Steve, you, oh, go well, ahead. Steve, over. you mentioned that uh, that Jesse does a a covered ACDC song on an album. He has how's that sound? It's cool. it's fantastic. It, it, it's great. I'll have to uh, I'll have to figure out a way to get it to you. Because <laughs> even even the other songs he does, he does uh, nobody's following. Give me back my bullets. They're I mean, Pretty give me hard. back my bullets. That's a song Taylor made for Jackal to play. And um, nobody's fault is, is is great too. I mean, he pulls out the, the Steven Tyler shit really good too. All right, maybe what do you got? All right, I'm gonna start off my list with the debut album. When will it rain? I, I, we I, we rain. can't. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we have enough fucking rain. Uh, I kind of picked this one. We already kind of touched base on this because this is the first time I actually saw Jackal on MTV 1993. You know, the two guitar players, Jimmy Stiff and Jeff Worley, are just so amazing on this album. Fantastic, cool video. You know, it's it's almost like in a sewer in a in a old Southern, probably like a Georgia uh, jail that they record this video in. Really, really cool. Good, good video. Check that out. Uh, song number two is Private Hell from uh, Push Comes the Shove. I love the gritty opening riff on it. I love the screaming vocals. And another great, great solo in this song. It, I, I think it's one of those hidden gems on Push Comes the Shove. Song number three, Billy Badass. More heavy guitar work in this one. You got the chainsaw. Jesse's actually saying, rock me, roll me, jack me off. Uh, this is like the Lumberjack's big brother, I think. Fantastic song, and I think they actually even made a video for that song, too. Uh, then then I duplicate Hoover's song, uh, Locked and Loaded, from the Choice Cuts album. Such a great duet. You know, you think all these great duets, like, you know, you got, like, Ozzy and Lita Ford. You have, like, you know, McCartney and Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson and a Paul McCartney. And, you know, just the, you know, that's 90s, 90s duet. You know, that's they're the two guys that you want fucking singing a song and it's fucking fantastic song number five deeper in darkness from when moonshine and dynamite collide i love the catchy chorus in it i love the verse right out of the solo where jesse doesn't really take a breath he just keeps going on and on he you know it's almost like a jekyll rapping away and then i end my list with you know pretty much every way they end their show is with the song off the debut album lumberjack and this funny story, BC, remember the time we were at M3 and we were, it, w- it was like, you know, 9.30 and we're shit-faced <laughs> and that big, humongous fucking fat guy on the stage, the roadie, he was cleaning up the stage and half of the stool was there that he cut off oh, yeah. and I'm like, hey, hey, throw me that fucking stool! <laughs> and, I, and I'm only like 10 feet away from him. I swear to God, that fucking son of a bitch threw that fucking stool 40 feet in the air behind me just to be a dick. You remember that? I forgot about that. Because I'm like, BC, oh my god, I get that. Though. They're going to be, they're going to do that thing. They're going to sign it. Boom. And he just, he didn't even look. He Boom. just picked it up and threw it. And, yeah. fucking, and I was so it. fucking pissed off. It took right I forgot but, about yeah, that. Yeah, but that, you know. That was it, at M3. Yeah, you have, you have, you have, you have to, have to end it with Lumberjack, you know. But, uh, yeah, fantastic list. All right, very cool. Uh, BC, what do you think of their list? I'm good. Uh, I'll start off with BB, uh. Window It Rain, come on, uh, off their first album is not a bad tune off that. I feel the sun shining down on me. Private Hell. There's the, it, it, that's a very, I mean, they came out that first album, it did Push Comes to Shove. Right. And, and, I mean, it was the music scene at the time, I think. And that just got lost. It doesn't get the respect it deserves, I don't think. Billy Badass, another kind of funny ish tune, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Locked and loaded. I mean, hey, if you're a band, you're going to do a duet song on your album. Who would ever think about getting Brian Johnson? I mean, you know what I mean? Maybe Michael Jackson, but not Brian Johnson. <laughs> Kick ass. <laughs> Deeper MJ Darkness. instead of BJ. <laughs> if we stuck to BB's rules, that was on my list. Deeper in Darkness would have been number like eight. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, how can you go around and finish off with the lumberjack? I, I, I remember that now. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That would have been amazing, just like hung up in my, you know, computer room there in the band habit sign. But that, that son of a bitch. I remember that it goes over our head like, what the fuck are you fucking throwing at? 
<laughs> it was so he, fucking He was bad. looking. He just picked. He was like going across the stage. Boom. I remember that. Yeah, BB. He, he, it took him a while to recover from that that night. Yeah, that was that was that was rough. No, it was like see, freak, freak, see now freak, now freak. that you bring it up, it's almost like he'd get mad again. Like he's mad again. Again. stress. Like look at him, he's God mad. Damn, <laughs> I still have a I still have a spot on the wall for that fucking half a fucking stool. I got a stool for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Hoover, Redneck Punk. I mean, like I don't care how shitty of a day you have, you hear the song "Come On" cranking. And it just lifts you up from that pit you're in, or whatever you want to call it, and you find yourself rocking out and drinking seven beers. Dirty little mind, life. I know. I've said this a million times. I'm going to continue to say it till I'm dead. Live music is always better than the recorded versions. Headed for destruction, another classic, and that would have made my list probably too. Like I said, my list was twenty some songs at one point. <laughs> just because I'm drunk, again. I think, and you hit the nail on the head on that one. I think it's the other way around. And uh, I see I, that. I, I, always I know you, buddy. I know. <laughs> she loves my cock. Classic one. And like, like Hoover, I play that. If we're, if we're out somewhere that's on a jukebox, you gotta I play, play it. it. You gotta play and it. People are like, you see people's heads turn around. Like, did he just say what I thought he said? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and again, locked and loaded. Like I said, if you're gonna do a duet, that was so cool to bring like somebody like Brian Johnson. Yeah. Like everybody be like trying to do something. Yeah, you don't think Brian Johnson. You don't think Brian you Johnson think Jackal. Really hit a duet or Jackal, but I, I love that song. We could do a twenty song Jackal episode and still struggle to get twenty. Yeah, yeah no right. shit. All right, um, coolest. I will start with uh, the Hoover here. I, I, I'm going backwards here. I like doing that. Um, Locked and loaded, great song. I, I love the and first time I heard that and like because you're you know you're reading the liner notes and you used to you know get CDs and shit and it's like oh Brian Johnson cool and it was it was cool like and that was um, probably in the what year was I don't know what year that was like early 90s I think that was uh, like 94 I think it was second album and uh, so that was in ACDC's period of when they started doing all of their mid-tempo shit and like this is probably the most rocking song that Brian Johnson had played on recorded in a while, so it was very cool to hear that. She loves my cock. Just and, and you're right, it's such a great riff on riff on there. And yeah, but just a, a great song. She loves my cock. It's freaking great. Just and, and you're right, BC. You see that on the jukebox somewhere. You, you it's it. a must play. A must play. I played it. I played it at a country bar one time. I don't know how it was even on a fucking thing. Oh, really? I was uh, these older people, and I played it, and everybody's looking at me like, you played this song? I said, yeah. Like, I thought I was going to have a ass I mean, it was funny. Awesome. Uh, just because I'm drunk, I talked about that on BC's list. Great song. Um, Headed for Destruction. Love the talk box and, and chainsaw. Like I said, you never in a million years would have thought the chainsaw would have been used as a musical instrument. Fucking awesome. And... Um, you know, and and we and we do the. I'll do, I'll talk about that when we get to BBs. Um, Dirty Little Mind, the live one, freaking great. As long as there's no bunny hop involved, BC. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't want to see that. Is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> no, no, we were all excited that, that the CD came out first. Uh-huh. All right, I'm going to bring out a Jack Daniels ladies up here, and oh, come on, ladies, go get up here. We're all thinking, yeah, cool. You bring all these women up here. We're going to do the bunny hop. We're going to do the bunny hop. Of course, our minds are in the gutter. And months later, the DVD came out, uh-huh. and we were watching, like, oh, here goes the bunny hop, the bunny hop. Not what we thought it was going to be. No, no. <laughs> um, watch it at your own peril. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and, and Redneck Punk, that's just a song that, damn it, like, just a fast thing. And I, and, I, and I like what Hoover said at the end, that, Redneck Punk, Redneck Punk, Redneck Punk. It's just, like, it's freaking fantastic. It's just an absolute ripper on that one. Uh, BB's List, Deeper in Darkness, really cool song. It's got a, a, a cool groove to it. Locked and Loaded. With Brian Johnson, um, you, you never would have thought, you know, Brian John. You know, like I said, you weren't thinking Brian Johnson with um, with Jackal, but uh, excellent. Billy Badass, freaking fantastic song. When I picked Sparks from Candy, it was either it was either that song or Sparks on Candy. So I, I went Sparks on Candy. So kill two birds with one stone. So Billy Badass is a badass song. Private Hell. Great song, like it. When will it rain? That was a that was a kind of uh, it was a Harpo tune. Remember Harpo used to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, just always cool. I love I I love the vocals in that. It's got that like kind of swampy sound to it. And uh, the lumberjack, like I said, uh, you know, 
every time and like BB said on the interview when we test the when actually when well when I, I know when I do when I test the chainsaw at the firehouses although I, I have not mastered the the break yet like because he gets almost to a stall and I can't do that I stall it out every time so I I, I have not perfected that part of of the, uh, the musical instrument see it's another musical instrument I can't fucking play BB um, <laughs> so uh, great list though I, I I it was this was one of the uh, you know I, I always I say it every time I I really enjoy listening going back listening to all these songs getting ready for this episode so uh, Hoover what do you got on BBs uh, when will it rain I mean you can't go wrong for any, from anything from that first album it's it's just it's just an amazing album they just come out swinging off that first album uh, Private Hell and uh, Billy Badass just two badass songs you know uh, Locked and Loaded of course that was on my list uh, Deeper and Darkness uh, another great tune. And the lumberjack, I she tried to play that this weekend when I was camping. I I, I still haven't mastered any of it. Of it. You know, <laughs> I try the best I can on that, but uh, it, it, it's just such such an amazing song. And again, if we did probably top twenty, the lumberjack would have made it on my list. You know, to me, that's the one overplayed song, and I I, I just wanted to step back from that uh, just just a little bit. But uh, I mean, when they end the show, and you know, they cut the stool up. I mean, that's just uh, that's just fantastic, and. That was one of the things when I saw him open for Aerosmith back in uh, the, yeah, the Grip Tour of a montage. I was like, wow, that's just super, super cool. And I, I'd assume that must be something in their writer that, uh, you know, instead of getting uh, M&Ms, they get uh, a stool added to the writer, which is uh, super cool. <laughs> which will not be returned in, in whole. <laughs> no. All right, cool. Uh, BB, what do you got for Hoover's? Uh, redneck punk, you know, you know, how many times have we said this tonight? You know, that, that first, that first album is, is just fantastic. It's just heavy right out of the gate. You know, anything from that first album has to be on, on a list. Uh, dirty little mind live. I love the showmanship. He gets the crowd into it. You know, he, he, even getting the ladies into it, you know, and, and how many times have we seen Jackal? It's just like a bazillion times and, and they're fucking fantastic. Every time we see them, uh, headed for destruction, another, a great song. You know, we we already have talked about this. You know, the talk box and the chainsaw. You know, they're they're changing out just like Eddie Van Halen did, like with the drill. You know, Jesse's doing it with a, a guitar and a chainsaw. It's just fucking fantastic. Uh, song number four, just because I'm drunk. Who? This is a great way to plug your plug your show. You know, the, the lyrics are, "Come quit in time on a Friday afternoon. Crank that old whiskey drinking tune." Uh, you know. Hoover, you know, we already said this before in the beginning, but hey, listen to Rock 107, rock107.com on Fridays from 5 to 6. The Big Hair Happy Hour. Hoover's spinning some tunes from the, you know, great hair metal. And uh, there's a Facebook page. Get on there, you know, interact with us. Steve and I are always on there harassing Hoover, you know, play <laughs> deeper cuts. And, you know, we, we know he, he's only, can only do so much, but, you know, we just like busting Hoover's ass. Oh, and by the way, Hoover, you didn't play Rainbow in the Dark first the week after you were on the podcast, by the way. Uh, well, I played it on on Saturday for DL's 10th anniversary last uh, week. All right, we'll let you skate. Yeah, there was like three songs he played, yeah. All right, my bad. Yeah, I, I, did, Man on, I did Man on the Silver Mountain, Rainbow in the Dark, and Last in Line. Oh, good, good combo. Yeah, good picks. Uh, song number five, She Loves My Cock, just a fantastic song. Uh, she walked through the flames of hell just to get to my cock i think that i think i think he says there but uh fantastic and then locked and loaded once again you know that 90s duet those two guys are just fucking powerhouses at at this time and what two what two better guys to do a duet than that but a fantastic list all right very cool uh i think we got everybody right we are we, yeah, yeah. We man, see that i was even kind of keeping track on that one so yeah guys out there um if if you are not a jackal fan i don't know why um, and if you're, go to if a you're, doctor. Yeah, and if you're not really familiar with a lot of these songs we talked about, check out our Spotify playlist. And uh, you know, and if, if you don't have Spotify, get it. But you can get the free version, and you just have to put up a couple commercials every now and then. But um, so check them out and uh, check out. We we do a Spotify playlist for all of our shows. It's in the show notes, and um, it, it was it was so cool checking out these Jackal songs again. I hadn't like I said I hadn't listened to Jackal in a while, and it's always good. And then you know. When you you know I heard horns up, I'm like, oh my god, that you know brought back that moment for me. You know, and and that's the that's the the best thing I think about music. Like you hear something like that, and if you haven't heard it, and I probably hadn't heard that song in like two or three years, or you know, and then it instantly brings you back to 
like a moment in time when you first heard it or something cool happened when you heard it and and that that's what i like about like like doing these episodes because there's so much stuff out there and you know and you can only you only have so much time to listen to so many things but when you have something like this a band like this and you come back to them and you're like holy shit like forgot about that hadn't heard that in a while and it, it brings you it has that nostalgic uh you know, feel to it, and it's just so cool to listen to. So uh, let's uh, we'll go around the horn here. We'll wrap it up. Uh, Hoover, when we get to you, uh, plug yourself in Rock 107 and your uh, Rock This Way podcast, and uh, go ahead, my friend. All right, well, first off, I want to say is uh, I always feel bad for Jackal uh, getting looped in, uh, like, lumped into the uh, whole hair metal thing. You know, you hear those guys on Hair Nation on Sirius XM, and I, I, I really think, they shouldn't be there. To me, they're a southern hard rock band and have nothing to do with the hair metal scene. Like To me, they should be more recognized as a band like the uh, Black Crows or uh, even Leonard Skinner. I, I mean, I think they're just an amazing hard rock, southern rock band, and they have that country twang to it. And one of the things I love about the band is they just have that, that they have a great groove, and uh, which is uh, very, very cool. Uh, and Plug my, my shit, I guess, yeah. Monday through Sunday on Rock 107 uh, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, 3 to 7 p.m. All right. Uh, BB. Uh, Hoover, thank you for setting me up with that interview. We, you know, that was a blast, and we had a ball. And Jesse's just, you know, fucking down to earth, fantastic guy. Jackal, fantastic live, step on your throat. There's no fucking fancy shit. They just go balls of the wall crazy, you know, rock and roll, southern hard rock music, you know. From their debut album to now, you know, hopefully, just think, debut album, 2022, that, that'll be like the 30th anniversary. Ooh, imagine they go front to back. Oh, <laughs> just, just thinking. But uh, that'd be great, and uh, love, love, the, love the Jackal shit. Hopefully by then we'll be going to concerts again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, I think Hoover said, like, these guys get blended in with hair metal for some god no reason. I don't think there was ever a phase that there were any close to hair metal. Like I said, they're a kick-ass southern hard rock band. Country boys, you know, drinking whiskey and bourbon and shit and playing rock and roll. Nothing fancy with these guys. They're straightforward, in-your-face rock and roll. And you see them live, and that's what you get. If you're going to be offended, don't go to a, a Jack show. <laughs> but the, like uh, I believe Steve said, the, the, this was so fun. It was way harder than I thought it would be when we first mentioned it. I'm like, oh, yeah, six songs. <laughs> Ground ball. No. It was way harder than that. You, you could do twenty six songs and you still have trouble getting it down. I don't, I don't like. I can't say I like everything, Jacko. Like I don't think everything's great, but I don't think there's bad Jacko at all. Kapow. <laughs> <laughs> there, I, I think you hit on a good one there, BC. I don't think there's a Jacko song that I hear and I'm like, ugh. <sighs> you know, like if, for as much as I love Van Halen, I hear Women in Love, ugh, kill me. There's, I don't think there's that Jackal song that that I've come across, anyways. But you don't um, like Women in Love? Oh, that that I think that is the worst Van Halen song. I'll take most of the songs off of Van Halen Three before I'll take that. I fucking hate that song. Totally kills the momentum of that album. Totally oh. kills it. <laughs> I, I, you know what, Hoover? I get that a lot though. <laughs> <laughs> when I say that. <sighs> yeah, I just I. Uh, that yeah, we we actually I did that that podcast yesterday with. Uh, with the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast, and we, we talked about that. And actually, I don't think anybody on that show actually liked that song, which which I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but anyway, Hoover, I'm going to start off by saying thank you for coming on the show again. Um, it, it's it's always great. You have great insights, and uh, hopefully we can you know continue our relationship with uh, with our podcast and, and, and your podcast. And thank you once again for hooking us up with these cool interviews and uh, that we've been able to do within the last like two weeks it's just been like freaking amazing because we're not really a podcast we don't really do a lot of interviews and it's kind of cool to kind of get back into that groove and um, and actually we have a, I, I uh, Dylan and I are going to do an interview episode in, in a week or so as well but um, Hoover once again thank you for hooking us up like that and and, and you know and, and thanks for over the years for you know for just like hooking us up at concerts and just you know was even saying hello. I remember we saw you at the Ozzy concert down in Allentown. We shot the shit for a couple minutes there. And um, Hoover's always a guy that you, you always see. He's always always talking to people, always a friendly guy, a great guy. We're finally, uh, we were able to get, get together to get him on the podcast. Like he said, we've been trying for 
a long time to get him on here, and finally it worked out. We were able to do that, and yeah, um, it, it took a quarantine for me to be able to get on with you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, now when the, when this shit gets back to normal, you, you you better you better be coming back on again, though. Yeah, I'll have to take the trek up to uh, Carbondale. There's a Carbondale hotel, isn't there? I can crash there at night. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely, for sure. Maybe we'll, we can get you a podcast discount. Maybe we'll see. I doubt it, <laughs> I doubt it but you know who knows. Um, maybe, maybe I'll throw the tent up in the backyard. Uh, there yeah, you we can go. do that. You can crash in our house or in the firehouse. We don't care. You know, we're, we're, yeah. We're... I mean, the last couple of weeks have been fun. We talked to some great people the last couple of weeks, and uh, you know, it, it, it's been fun. Yeah, for sure. And, and this and, is a great time because everybody's stuck at home. Yeah. So no, now it's like no now they don't say you know they can't say oh I'm kind of busy and this. I'm and on that. tour. Yeah. yeah. I'm in Japan. <laughs> Yeah, so for sure. So, you know, thank you. We appreciate it. Everybody out there, uh, get your jackal on. Uh, throw some jackal on, crack a beer, crack a, you know, crack a wine cooler again if you want, BC. BC drinking a Swedish wow. fish beer here now. Uh, BC's fucking fancy today. Yeah, I know. it. I think I think Hoover and, and uh, BB are drinking Keystone Light <laughs> here. Well, and... I, I got some uh, Jack and those uh, chasers as well nice okay nice. that's good I, I think we may bust out the fireball when we get done here um and i right. got a little little corona light going that that's helping me fight the virus as well so uh <laughs> and, don't, and don't forget rock me roll me jackal me off absolutely yes. <laughs> jackal me off i think that's what we're going to call the episode whether dylan wants to or not sorry dylan but uh, that's going to be an executive decision <laughs> it's <think>. been named <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, so thank you thank you everybody for tuning in i hope everybody's staying safe out there i'm not going to get into a whole big uh coronavirus thing we all know what's going on and everybody just stay safe out there use your head and um you know use this time to listen to some rock and roll you know uh get out there check out a check out, if you haven't listened to jackal in a while throw spin some jackal even just go to spotify listen to our spotify playlist you'll hear all the songs we talked about and maybe even some more i'm not sure how what dylan's going to put on there but i'm sure we'll, he'll have the songs we talked about tonight so uh you know you guys out there stay safe keep sharing us uh you know, if if you feel um, enough to do it, um, just give us a good review. Hopefully on uh, Apple, I think it's called Apple, officially called Apple Podcasts now. And um, you know, give us a good review on there. We give us give us a review. We'll read you on the air. And if you guys have any ideas for shows or something like that, or something you want us to check out, you know, you can message uh, the the podcast page. You can message myself or any of the guys at any time on Facebook or. You know, hook us up with that way or send an email to Potter Than Hell Podcast at gmail.com. And in the meantime, we're going to keep, uh, we're going to have a couple more beers here and we are going to sign off for the night. So, everybody out there, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And we'll see you next time. And there definitely will be a next time. <laughs>